up, devils? Get it all back to answer more goddamn questions. Before we get the questions of the video, got two emails, goddamn it. One's a shout out from Kyle M. Orders from us all the time. And don't know your fucking last name, bro, bro. I can't remember. But uh, he just puts Kyle M, letter M. So whatever the fuck the M stands for, I can't remember. And he just says in the email, yo, Justin, I watch your channel on the regular. That's what I like to hear, bro town. And was wondering if you could do me a salad and shout out my label. And uh, the label is Ham Ask Records. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it. Or ha -ha I'm, oops. Let me know if I'm pronouncing that right, bro, bro. But it's spelled H-A-M-A-S-K Records. So go ahead and fuck Google that and check out his shit. He's definitely got a few releases. It's kind of like um, thrash and it seems like it's mostly like, uh, you know, thrash, like old school type stuff. And then um, he's got a mini distro too. So go the fuck on over there and check him out. God damn it. And then next in line, I got a fucking email question from David Colon, who um, he orders all the time. And he also, um, he kind of emails me quite often with shit just like, um, not the questions. What the fuck does he say? Uh, maybe some of his questions or uh, talking about bands and shit. That's usually get some of the guys mixed up because some guys I get about five people that email me very regularly. That's channel related stuff, asking questions about bands or just things like that. But it, I just I usually just answer it right in an email. But anyways, this was a good one for the channel. And he says, "I have a question for you. Finally, I know you will be honest too. It's what I try to always be, bra bra. Laugh out loud. What is your honest opinion of police officers?" I was hesitant, hesitant to ask only because there are some shitty cops. Yeah, but there's shitty everything out there. <laughs> God knows I work with a few fucktards. Hey, you're not alone there either, brah, brah. So do I. My fiance and I do not hang out with cops. We have friends out of the field. I find cops to be arrogant, and we can't stand that. My fiance has been an officer for 16 years, and I have been on for 28 years. Well, so, I mean, if you guys aren't arrogant, then there's two that aren't right there. Uh, she works as a SR, SRO in a middle school, and I'm a, de and I'm a detective in sex crimes. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. But you see a lot of crazy shit in there. I have the DSI sticker on my desk. <laughs> what do your coworkers say? Well, who the fuck DSI? <laughs> you say, that's right, brah, brah. Fucking D uh Death metal is my religion, and deicide is the fucking priest, goddammit. So we tell them fucking canoes, who the hell is deicide? Get lost, bro town. Anyways, you want to offend me with your op your your option? I don't know if you meant option or opinion. Because we do have some shitbag cops in this country. If you, re if you read it on your channel, great. If not, that's cool, too. I was curious, that's all. Anyway, see you, Dave. I think it's a pretty good question. Definitely on top of this, definitely not brought up here. I will say as full disclosure, uh, it's not something I generally think about. You guys know me. I think I made it crystal cl pretty crystal clear. I don't really pay attention to the um, outside world and what goes on in life, life events, you know, wars, vaccines, all this other shit. I don't pay attention for several reasons. Number one, if you can't control it, why pay attention? Number two, um, I don't got fucking time. Um, I got the I got this easy as fuck, busy as fuck job. You know, the, the poor baby listening to death metal all goddamn day. That guy, so I don't got time to fucking pay attention to stupid shit that I can't control. And to be completely honest, I just don't fucking care. <laughs> I can't even force myself to care. What's going to happen is going to fucking happen, right? So um, with cops, though, well, for starters, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent, they're a necessary evil. You know what I mean? So you definitely fucking need them. Um, and now you're going to get these fucking tough guys out there that, that'll, you know, say that they don't. I got my guns and shit like that. First off, I've always said this. Even before all the goddamn went, went down. But it was especially, it was just fucking slam dunk. Confirmed that J-Dog's right yet again. Once all the fucking shutdown shit happened. I've said years prior to that. Dude, it, it, your guns are well, not guns. You, you make it sound like you guys are going to be running around like fucking Rambo. Jumping behind your fucking car. Fucking at war with whatever. People, other people shooting and then blasting. Pew, 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 pew at each other like. You're going to be doing fucking shit, man. If anything hits the fan, your little pistols and shotgun. Got shotgun on his back, two pistols on the side, two in his hands, couple on the fucking ankles. Like, What are you talking about, dude? You honestly think that's going to happen? And you're going to be dead in the first 10 minutes if shit goes to the war. So your little pistols ain't going to do fucking shit. Best case scenario, they're good, good for two things. If you're a hunter, you absolutely need them. And if um, home protection, I guess. But even in that scenario, you're not. You're going to be shaking like a leaf to shoot a person when it comes time to shoot them because... 
from anybody I've ever talked to, and I've, and I've talked to people, whether it be in the military or whatever, shooting a person is not as easy as you fucking think it is, Mr. Tough Guy, so you're probably not going to do it anyways. And then if you fucking do, minimally you're going to court over it, whether you go to jail or not. You know it's not going to be justified because the losers always fucking win. That's just the way it goes. I know if it's my ass, even if I had a knife in my fucking side from the guy, everything, and I shot the guy dead, I'm still going to jail because that's the J-Dog luck. So it's like, okay, great, you killed the guy, protect your home, but now you're going to fucking prison for your life. life. Rest of your life. Shit, I probably would have preferred don't protect my home. Kill me now because I'm the type of person if um if I was given the uh punishment, life in prison or the electric chair. Give me the fucking chair. Why would I want what to me, life in prison's way worse. Why would I want to still live? I don't I wouldn't want to. Fuck that. Get me the fuck out of here. ASA fucking P. So that's where my stance is on that. So yeah, these little pistols, you ain't gonna be doing fucking shit. So having said that, you need the goddamn fucking police. Now, having said that too. They don't need to be complete fucking jerks and um, completely abuse their powers. The thing is with saying that, I think that that's way, and I'm not on that side, way less than it, uh, it's amped up to be. That's the media, again, giving the false fucking lies. It's funny, you see stuff on TV here and there. The only time I kind of see it on TV is when I'm at the gym doing cardio. Like, there was the ones that hit that chick recently or whatever. Of course, it's always the race card. Gets, dude, I'm so sick of hearing about the fucking race card. So sick of hearing about it. It doesn't matter your goddamn race. It matters if you're an asshole or not a fucking asshole. That's what the fuck it matters. And it's funny. You see the chick. Yeah, maybe they didn't need to hit her at the same time, but she's some babbling fucking dumbass buffoon that's going off on a tangent. And they kind of like, they're human too. They probably overreacted, but it's kind of like, if I was in that scenario too, I don't know if I wouldn't do it either. What I'm getting at is whenever they're kind of like considered police brutality and I see it, I'm like, this person was kind of asking for it anyways. I was like, maybe it's a pinch excessive, but at the same time, kind of don't blame them. Because I got to honestly say, every cop that's ever pulled me over or whatever has always been super friendly to me. Never, never a jerk. And I'm some, sometimes when I had long hair, black clothes, inverted crosses, a metal dude is what I'm getting at. Stickers on the back of my car, shit like that. They could probably think, of, who's this fucking loser? You know what I mean? They're always nice to me. Why? Because I'm super polite and respectful when they get to the goddamn car window, and that's like, what, what do you want, man? Oh, you ruined my day. You answer like that. What the fuck do you think they're going to do? You know what I mean? So my experience has always been fucking good, to be honest with you. I have seen a couple to where you can kind of see, like, let's say I'm walking around, a, um, well, have been the fairgrounds or so, and some of them come off as, like, especially the really young ones, little kind of that, that high school jockey douchebag. And he's kind of using it to uh, this uh, position of authority to make up for his uh, small dick slash fucking insecurities. I'm guaranteed that does happen. But again, it's a necessary evil because you need them. So it's um, you take the bad with the good. Look, everything. Friend, I've one of my fucking sayings that I've always I've said it back in the Hellcast days. Put it on the uh, J Dog fucking gravestone. With every positive, there's an equal fucking negative. No matter what you fucking do. Doesn't matter what it comes in life. Do do the math. You'll 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 see it every, every single fucking time. So you have cops. Of course, you're gonna get fucking some abusive ones, but that's it's the name of the game. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. That's where I stand. But yeah, hundred percent fucking need them. The jerk ones, are the jerk ones. Uh, if they're abusing their power, then uh, hopefully they're punished um, justifiably, but not stupidly because they're playing this race card shit. I'm so sick of hearing about that fucking crap. That's beyond fucking annoying. So that's kind of my goddamn stance on them. Anyways, next goddamn video in line is on the uh, Sadistic Intense Story Time with J-Dog. The Kings of Procrastination question mark. First question in line I see is from uh, Curls and Twirls. J-Dog is releasing vinyl records and seeing how they're made change your personal attitude toward conditions. Well, first off, seeing how they're made I have been to, uh, I've been to two vinyl plants in my life, so I have, to a degree, seen the how they're made, like a one-off here and there. But I don't, I'm not around it to that degree. I'm around it actually how they come out, like in shipping them and shit like that. But as far as how they're actually manufactured, I have more insight than the average person, but uh, not a whole hell of a lot more. As opposed to somebody that actually works at a pressing plant would have seen a hell of a lot more than I have. I'm sure you get tired of perfectionists wanting to return records <laughs> with minor imperfections that don't affect play, e.g. hairline scuffs, slight warping, the design not looking like the mock-up, etc. 
My motto is, if it plays, it stays. That's Athnar's fucking motto, too. He loves the fucking uh, bent-up goddamn jackets. When you go into, uh, you look at uh, Athnar's goddamn vinyl collection, you see off mine, all the spines are just white. White and banged up. Um, just the way they look. He's like, yeah, the, the, the cover is meant to uh, protect the actual record. The record is what you care about. Spins. Loves his banged-up jackets. That's why anytime I get a fucking dinged-up LP cover, I'm like, fuck, and I have to hide this from Athner, man. He's going to be drawing out the goddamn bit for this copy. Me, I used to be uh, a teenager. That shit would annoy the fuck out of me having a bent goddamn corner split scene. It's for sure not preferred to this day, <laughs> but I'm definitely a lot more relaxed on it. Yeah, if I get I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Kind of, yeah, whatever. Because at the end of the day, yeah, you're kind of just archiving it, collecting it. So if it has a little bit of a ding corner, when you really break it down to, okay, so if it has a ding corner, why is it that you care? The mentality is, whether you realize it or not, the reason you care is because chances are you're trying to resell it 20 years or whatever down the line, advertising its mint condition, which it may truly be. But the only reason you care is so that way you get top value dollar. Well, are you archiving and collecting and you actually care about the actual album? At that point, no. You're just doing it because you are eventually getting rid of it. You're just... Basically, like you're buying a, almost like a stock, but in the metal scene, and you're just waiting for it to build up fucking value and then sell sell it when it's fucking worth a lot more money. Is that you caring? No, that's just you caring about your fucking bank account. Whether you realize it or not, that's probably why you care the most. And once I've came to that re realization here for myself, I said, like, huh, yeah, I have zero intention on selling this. So it has a little bit of ding corner on The cover still looks the same. I got the artwork. It plays fine. Kind of who cares? But, I mean, I do kind of like to look pristine and sharp, and you know what I mean, that I actually care about my shit, but I've always done that way for everything. Like, I don't, I don't need my shit all fucked up looking, so definitely lax on it. Yeah, I mean, I get the mentality when we get the emails, because I was there as, myself as a kid, but definitely, uh, it, 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 I, it's, it's, I'm more lax on it. Like, oh, God, here we go. Another goddamn Steve Urkel. Hey, guys, I'm here. Got a little bit of a dot corner. Can I reset, reship it, you know, get a new one? Like, oh, fuck, of course I just... Do it, but I'm just definitely kind of like, dude, is it really that bad? Is it going to affect your life that goddamn much? Fuck, I mean, if it's bothering you that much, what the fuck, fuck are you going to do when the day comes and you hear you got cancer? <laughs> it's been a lot of fucking worse things like come out that, that uh, but I can prepare for that. I'm being corner. That's the way I see it now. But again, I get it because I was there myself. So, what's the idea in question mark in the fucking line? What is human brisket saying? Flat brimmed hat reminds me of Gein. Gein? Like Ed Gein? Why the fuck's it remind you of that? I wear my my flat curved hats remind me of the Kardashians or Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> Watching the fat ball game at Applebee's. Fat ball game is on at Applebee's. Last been, been, a, been a while since I've been to Applebee's. But um, I recall some serious fat ball going on there when I was there. Uh, Crocodile Dundee. Isn't he wearing more of like a cowboy style hat? It's been a while since I've seen that goddamn movie. I have seen it. Charlie, get the fuck down, goddammit. Charlie. Hey! 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 Climbing on top of the goddamn deceased coffin. Yeah, I remember Dundee wearing kind of more cowboy style hat, but correct me if I'm, he sure as fuck wasn't wearing a goddamn Cleveland Browns fucking flat brim sideways. I would remember that. Uh, Wicked Devil. J Dog goes soft at 60, question mark. Can't see it. Can't see 60 year old J Dog apologizing for ripping off roots, bloody roots. <laughs> Shit, dude, I feel like I've gone soft since my uh, age 20. That's for goddamn sure. So, you know, that was just 18 years ago. So, in another 22 years, will I be soft by then? Softer? I don't like to call it soft. It just gets to the point where you just, <laughs> you just don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? I just stopped giving a fuck about shit, to be completely honest with you. A lot of it just kind of just goes to the wasteland. I'm like, oh, what, whatever. Erasmo Martinez. Hey, J-Dog, is there any plans to repress Empatego on vinyl? Kind of answer this, and but I've re-brought it up in email through a, um, through a company idea. Which label was it, Chase? Again, I want to keep saying fuck off and die. But I thought maybe he said it was somebody else. They're doing a box set. I think it's a box set vinyl. and uh, Or it's box set CDs, but I want to say it's a box set vinyl. So in that case, kind of puts the kibosh on that. Why, why would we do singles and and, and and Mark did specifically say, because oh, that's what we talked to is Mark from Montego. Um, yeah, I'd be up for it after the uh, box set's done. And um, so, 
So if we do do it, it's not anytime soon because that box that's not even out. So kind of that comes out. Wait to fucking sell out. Maybe wait another six goddamn months after that. Then submit ours. Shitty ass fucking plant turnaround times. So what are we talking? Fucking four or five years. So not anytime soon. It sounds like, but it sounds like it's kind of coming out. But who the fuck knows what that guy's doing? Because I heard that like two years ago now. It seems like. Lady Lover ninety question: Have you ever brought a bootleg for a band member to sign and they refused? No, no, I have not. Um, I brought the Vader um, Reborn in Chaos twelve inch picture this bootleg on my wall right over there. God damn it, Doc and uh, Peter signed it. I remember Doc even saying, "Oh shit!" He said, like, "This is a bootleg. I don't even have one of these." So I didn't even know this existed. And I didn't even know it was a bootleg. Again, like even back then when I say, I think I bought that from blackmetal.com in the early 2000s. And uh, I didn't know it was a bootleg. I, and when he told me that too, I wasn't like, oh, it's shitty bootleg. I'm just thinking, oh, well, it's the version that exists. That's the only version that exists. It's my favorite Vader stuff, the two, uh, two demos. Um, probably my favorite Vader song of all time is the demo version of the song Chaos. It's the first track on the Reborn in Chaos CD slash picture this. Now, granted, that was the very first thing I ever heard by Vader, but that demo recording for specifically the song Chaos, that is probably my favorite Vader song ever. And then after that, the very next track in the same demo, uh, Vicious Circles. This is probably my second book of Vader. So, um, but they no, they were really cool about it. Uh, I'm trying to think what other bootlegs I could bring to sign by bands and what did they say? Never, definitely nobody ever turned down. Um... I've heard stories of people saying other uh, diehard Merciful Fate King Diamond collectors, when they met King, they had him sign one of his boots, and he just kind of chuckled, oh, wow, this, I've never seen this. This is a bootleg. Um, but it was a conspiracy, and he signed it. Um, I've even seen photos where he wrote, this is a boot. <laughs> and then King Diamond, Stay Heavy 9. I've actually seen it, physically seen signatures like that. Um, uh, fucking Google Images has seen that. He's probably coming up. King Diamond signatures, King Diamond bootleg signatures, maybe. Put that in. Uh, can't remember what how I saw it, but uh, I'm sure there's probably fine if you fucking dug deep enough. Uh, so obviously he took it in good spirits. I never, I technically met King Diamond, but it was we didn't have anything for him to sign, and it was if if you count it, it was the goddamn fist bump fucking package. Um, I'm trying to think, who the fuck did I have signed boots? Yeah, I guess I haven't had too many bootlegs signed though. Come to think of it. Um. Yeah, I guess I haven't had too many sign a few, and but no, nobody's ever bitched. So, however, I could see I could see some of these pussy ass tampon boys doing that. Don't get me wrong; would not be the shock the blood least bit if I heard that. Get one more goddamn quickie. Uh, Andrew Gabriel, J Dog, what's your favorite sadistic intent song? <sighs> Probably a toss-up between a few. Funerals, Funerals Obscure, Morbid Faith, and Asphyxiation. Paul Kratz. Today, Glenn Benton is interviewed by Jamie Josta. Yeah, I did watch that uh, interview. And isn't that, so that's the guy that's putting on Milwaukee Metal Fest, right? And he's also the guy that's, wait, so he's in the band Hate Breed. Don't know what he does in Hate Breed. Have no interest in Hate Breed. Never cared about Hate Breed. Not even curious to listen to Hate Breed today. Uh, I always assumed that was uh, Canoe shit. I remember hearing about that band when I was in middle school, high school. Put that with the Canoe crowd. I will say this. We'll give him this credit during the interview. Between him talking about Deicide and other bands, whether bringing up Morbid Angel, Cannibal Corpse, he even mentioned Mortician. He got more cavalt points, <laughs> like distributor cult would say. Distributor cult points would say, cavalt points than I expected them to have. I thought he was going to be goddamn pan terra fucking city. So he definitely seemed more, a lot more respectable than I would have expected than just what I had in my mind if I had a just a vision. Um, so kudos there. However, I will say this too. I think he probably thinks he's more in the loop than he actually is. And I could be wrong on this. He might be able to, because I didn't actually hear him bring anything underground either. And I kind of noticed when he brought up Mortician, I think he bought, I'm busting out the super UG guns. Not anymore, Barbara. Maybe in 1999, that would yeah, kind of count. 
Um, does he know who Ab Horns from Brazil is? Highly fucking doubt it. Again, he might. He might. I'm not saying that because, like I said, I was a little bit more impressed. But, I mean, he didn't bring up. I just got the vibe. He kind of, He's one of those guys. He's in the know. He's hell a lot more in the know than those fucking Pantera idiots that I went to school with. That's for goddamn sure. But, I mean, I got the vibe. Like, in his mind, he thinks he's, I'm completely in the metal loop, bro. I totally know what's up. Does he know abhorrence? Does he know sadistic intent? Denial of God? Hemorrhage? Like, underground bands but solid household names. I would not be surprised if he fucking doesn't. That's what I'm I'm getting at. Um, in that case, you're dude, you're still out of the loop. You know the big guys. You know, yeah, you know the true real shit of the big boys. So there's a possibility, you know, he's walking around thinking he's in the know, and it's like, like, fuck you're in the know, goddamn it. You're not in the know for fucking shit. So uh, you know what I mean? There's that possibility. But he he what he was he didn't annoy me, let's just put it that way. So, but yeah, I did see that. And I would actually recommend going out and checking out that Glender if you if you're a DSI fan. If you're not, don't waste your goddamn fucking time. But uh, I recommend it. I watched the full thought, uh, and I enjoyed it. Thought it was a good, good goddamn interview. Uh, it'd be nice if I, fucking the old goddamn dog could get the fucking uh, GB on interview. That's what slightly annoys me, especially about the guy that did him uh, last year too. And it's not a jealousy thing or something. Oh, jealous! You know, I don't give a shit. I actually liked this interview. The, the, uh, the Deathcore fucking douche, and he just had uh he had exhumed on fucking a couple months ago too. And I watched it every shot. Thought it was pretty good. It's a l- slightly annoying to me because guys like that are getting Glenn Benton on, and the thing is. I'll deicide that guy under the fucking table. I've been a fan of deicide longer. He just finally saw them for the first time. Immediately, he knows the same age as me. With with fucking Ben Brotown, he tells me tells me you're newbie central. Goddamn it! Just things like that. It's a little annoying that a fucking diehard ass fan owns everything, has a commander, like actually knows, and I can actually ask. Mine would be off the cuff, but I guarantee I'd have better questions that no interviewer has ever fucking asked. And it'd be more kind of funny because it's like, I know the DSI history, as you compose, you could tell he just started listening to DSI last year and he definitely did some goddamn research before the show. My ass don't need research. It's all motherfucking up here, goddamn it. It's been listening since I was a goddamn little kid. So it's a little annoying in that sense because me, when I go to meet GB, I have to turn his ass around by the fucking shoulder, literally, get a fucking photo and I don't even get the goddamn fist bump, turns around like I'm, like I'm a, pile of shit on the fucking side of the uh side of the road, you know what I mean? As, and then these fucking kind of canoes, these nobodies who aren't, like I said, I'll deal side them under the table all day, every day, twice on fucking Sunday, they get the goddamn interview and the fucking hand job. So it's just kind of like, can we actually have a fucking real fucking fan, a real medalist interview these guys? That's where I get a little going. But the, it's what we got, and I'll say I enjoyed it. It was, they did a decent job. J-Dogs would have been a better goddamn job. But it's what the fuck we got. Then that's you know, the way, way goddamn life rolls, right? Comes what's concerned, you know, what we can do. Put the guy box, get in, play in the morning. Later, goddamn it.